Hi everybody. Everyone knows the the deal with me and skin disease. I think it's um, a very a very sad situation syndrome that a lot of dogs are plagued with that are I, I believe is just unnecessary. And I'm trying to so hard to figure out a solution to this, trying to um, come from it from all different aspects because skin disease isn't just one aspect. It's There's many, many components to it and lots of different ways to approach it. Yeast is one of them. Yeast is a, is a, a nasty thing that creates a lot of uncomfortable situations with dogs and we created a protocol called yeasty beast it's a very interesting concept it's uh it's it's new there's a very strategic approach to it which is i'm not going to bore you with the whole details of every single thing that's in it i just want to kind of get it across the idea so Yeast is something that we're all running around, we're doing kefir, we're doing probiotics, we're doing all of that stuff. And, and that's good, it is good, but when yeast is strong, the die-off is more uncomfortable for your dog than the actual yeast itself. It's such a toxic little beggar. It probably has about 15 different really, really harmful toxins in it. Uh, one of it being like acetone, which is what we use, used to use for nail polish remover. But when they die, they actually can have up to 30 times the, uh, the toxins when with the death process. And they're like a little, they have almost like a skeleton. And when they die, they, they basically have like a burial ground in your dog's body that is can can look like your dog's getting sicker it can look like the yeast infection is getting worse and then you wind up on this merry-go-round where you go back into the vets the dog go, goes on antibiotics again or more ketoconazole or more antifungals of, of of a prescription based and really what's happening is it not needing that it needs to be detoxified but if we even go one step farther back from that because for me I try to avoid extra suffering at all costs I can I can just I can hardly bear when 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 an animal suffers so for me to detoxify them that quickly and to you know just try to kill it and let them push through often it doesn't work and they go through unnecessary um, uh, itchiness and lethargy and feeling crappy when really what we need to do is look at doing a slow almost like if we were at war with these guys and what would we be doing what would our strategic plan be so the first thing is we want to remove all sugars from from your dog's diet so anything with grains anything with carrots anything with um, anything that produces sugar because yeast thrives on sugar so the process is for first two weeks we're making the yeast actually weaker by starving them and then I created with a with a, a company in the US that specializes with enzymes we have found specific enzymes that then go in and consume the yeast when it's vulnerable so it's starting to starve, it's in a vulnerable state, we bring the army in to actually ingest the yeast before they actually die. And what this does is it prevents the over toxification, the death process where the, the, the die off symptoms are actually worse than the symptoms of the yeast to begin with. We've put a particular probiotic in it that doesn't work like a probiotic and it's actually yeast based which sounds kind of weird but from a homeopathic perspective it's actually quite cool and when you think of something flushing so instead of this probiotic planting um, colony forming units it doesn't work like that it actually helps to almost lure the yeast through the intestinal um, uh, system and out through the feces when it's sick and dying 
Then what we've done is we've used caprylic acid and we've used podarco, which we know are antifungals. So what we're, the whole concept of this is we're making it weaker, we're starting to attack it, we're ingesting it as it's dying with the hopes of slowing down the process of the yeast die off. In the protocol, we're supporting the liver because the liver is the one that's going to be going, wow, there are a you know what ton of toxins in my body right now. So we wanna support the liver to be able to detox up that process. Uh, we also have a homeopathic remedy that will help to detoxify and will also help to mm, decrease the itch response uh, while they're going through the process. After that's done, we do recommend then going on a leaky gut protocol. And the reason that we've done that is because yeast creates more damage than you can possibly even imagine in the gut lining and in the wall. And when we were putting dogs on the leaky gut protocol, we were ramping up their immune system like crazy and it was doing its job by killing the yeast. But with, the, with dogs that had too much yeast, that wasn't just a leaky gut on its own, but a leaky gut with an overgrowth of yeast, they were just detoxifying too quickly. So we had to come up with a solution for those dogs and that's what Yeasty Beast is. So you guys can try it when you know that, you know, you, you can smell yeast. They smell like dirty socks. They smell, they smell fungusy, right? So what, uh, if you're smelling that smell, it's a really good idea to start with the yeast protocol and then move into the leaky gut protocol. So I hope that helps. It's a, it's a yucky subject and it's, uh, it creates a lot of, a lot of unnecessary, uh, not always just suffering, but just, they just feel yucky. They, they're itchy. They, they're stinky. No one wants to hug them. They don't want to be, everyone's complaining that they're, you know, that they're stinky dogs. And they're not stinky dogs. They're actually, uh, it's the manifestation, it's the smell of the yeast. So we wanna get rid of those guys and send them on their way and then work on healing the gut. So I hope that helps. Thank you.